Well, as we're sitting here, uh, I guess it is the uh, Tuesday afternoon, late afternoon, October 24th, year 2023, here with the Hello Hello Show. My name is Chaim Mizrahi, continuing with the tradition of public access and the tradition of the Hello Hello Show. It's been on the air since 1980. Of course, not to fail to mention the contribution by Fraser Dougherty and, uh, and then Francis Anne, of course, and then the likes of you that make it your business to fortify and enhance the concept of public access as we sh should feel very fortunate to actually not only to have this kind of stage of public access available at our disposal, but also that there is a kind of uh, a motivational motion that on its own behalf is thriving and, and meeting us throughout all the twists and turns of the actual uh, journey on the surface so we should i feel very happy because that's how i feel every time i come uh, here to ltv and do the show and curate some art shows and whatnot so it's all kind of connected so it's a good feeling yeah of course spending as much time as i did with the founder fraser dougherty god bless his soul that passed away about a month ago at age 101 and i always knew that he's going to live to be 100 there was something about this level of vitality that couldn't tolerate death, you know, that it was uh, uh, just uh, something that you actually can learn about yourself if you were to to be willing and able to observe others. And just as much as I learned from a concept, I, le I learned from just a living human being that can be completely alien to me and a stranger, but still nevertheless, that code of conduct relating to a code of behavior is so universal that uh, if we accept it as a given, it's very easy to draw from it, to learn from it, to benefit from it and whatnot. Today, I just wanted to really mention, I'm, I'm gonna try to call my friend Steve Rom and bring him on uh, and, um, uh, and and see if I can uh, have some a few laughs with him. And I'm sure I can make you laugh in the process. And um, it, the, I remember when I was growing up, there was something to the effect of uh, <clears throat> being a, a little more observant than, than I mean, let's just say that if I take myself from age 9 to 13, uh, I was the, the, the kind of an individual that, that uh, 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 observing was like a second nature to me, uh, while people, uh, kids at my age were completely you know, floating in midair. I was more like concrete on the ground wanting to get answers, you know, whether I out loud verbally expressing it or just kind of keeping it to myself and and thinking and, and reflecting. So I learned at an early age, what, it, what does it mean really to reflect, you know, what is reflecting at age nine, you know, how what point of reference can you use at age nine in order to understand what is the nature or the fact that reflection is a thing that we can understand and use. So I, I always had that. So because I had it in a heightened level than, than my age uh, uh, allows, um, then, I, then I could really relate to my dad in terms I had like a point of reference that I can judge him through. So it was kind of awkward, interesting, um, predictable and whatnot. So I ended up really uh, grading my dad's uh, achievements, behavior, you know, uh, uh, how is he as a father? How is he as a husband? How is he as a friend to his friends? And, uh, and that, that's really the only, the, the only, the only things that were like in the daily, in the daily uh, basis uh, uh, present. <clears throat> and so I kind of saw myself potentially maybe in the future going through that. So anything that I can get my hands on in terms of trying to understand it, but in my age, it wasn't understanding. It was reflecting. It was uh, observing. It was looking closer than usual. And um, so with the gut feeling, as much as I can say that at age 10, 11, 12, I had a gut feeling, and even if I did, I'm not so sure I would I would understand that that's what it really is a gut feeling, um, so I I would uh, 
I would figure out enough to understand that maybe his childhood was not as rosy as I thought it would be or was, and that uh, he must have, without knowing details, we must have gone through some really freaky things, you know. Not violent, but just friggin' freaky because people are uh, living in times where being retarded was the norm, was the 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 relatable to the times of ignorance, you know? So, even in the face of not knowing really what exactly he went through in his childhood, I assumed and accepted upon myself this conviction that he must have gone through things just because my grandmother and my grandfather and their fathers and mothers, my great-grandmother, my great-grandfather, they they only knew what they knew. And I heard stories that uh, that I could not fit together with the people that I know, their faces, their their entity, their aura, just didn't mix together. But they were a product of their times and they were like, you know, exposed to whatever. And therefore, when they grow up, it didn't seem so strange to actually be the one that's, that's, that's adapting all these things that that he, he was exposed to. And, and maybe sometimes finding yourself believing in something or behaving in a certain way that you don't necessarily believe in, you know? That it's just kind of because you're there and because you're soaked with it and because it grabs you and because it makes you hers, if we're talking about Mother Nature or just nature itself. Uh, him, they, hers, his, mine, <coughs> ours. <coughs> so it, in, in that sense, Suddenly, the fear, if, for example, my father would be upset about something and if he approaches me, for example, he could end up slapping me. I'm, he's not going to kick me in the head, but he will slap and, and, I, and I, know he, I know his strength and I know that I need to be afraid of it because that will keep me alert. But uh, I would be able to understand the person in front of me in ways that I had no way of being able to even think that it's possible that I can relate to it. So even if I saw my father coming to me because he's upset, something happens, or, and you know how it is, uh, well, I don't know, I don't know how it is, I don't, I don't hit my kids, but suddenly it didn't seem like he's this animal approaching me to slap me or to rough me a little bit and scream or whatever. So... When I think now, growing up, these experiences that I went through, they were almost almost like self-inflicted because I, I forced myself to to be in a certain place and do certain things in order to gain the knowledge, in order to acquire into the mechanism of things. And for that sake, it can be emotional or spiritual. It's real, speaking of all these stages and levels that are that we've been carried with as it goes up or down usually the elevation and that's that's a good place to be but then uh, so that allowed me also to be able to fantasize that I'm I'm actually interacting with my father uh, actually we're conversing actually we're communicating uh, actually we're interacting and really most, most, most probably, most of it never took place. But still, the ability to fantasize, I don't know if I should use the word fantasize, just indulge in that vacancy that I can dip myself into and to uh, treat it with respect and uh, and take advantage as much as possible every time it's present or every time it's making itself available to to us so that it will be at our disposal. Um, so growing up, that, that little bit really, and it didn't happen a lot, but it was so powerful that if I, if I speak of a dozen times that it occurred, that I could really suddenly see outside of the moment and see all those whom are involved in this particular scene or another. And my father would be there also, so I would be able to see them 
in their environment that many decades earlier for some reason. And that's stuck. So, I mean, you know, I, I can think of, of all kinds of crime and criminals and, and violence and aggression and whatnot, and like we experience today in the world, you know. Um, I, I don't want to say that I would like to take the German people that were literally, did not try, but literally annihilated almost the entire Jewish race from the face of the earth. I mean, if you think about it, it's not even close to being avant-garde. It's it's horrifically avant-garde, uh, 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 post-modernism with heavy-duty, progressive, conservative base that melts on the basis of simple attempts, it disappears and becomes again altogether. It's like, still... Uh, you can show you compassion just briefly, not necessarily compassion, showing compassion, but you can, you can think compassion because you can see the moment now and then outside in itself, closer to its point of origin. And you want to see there a, I don't know if it's a relief, maybe it's just a, um, a yes, a relief, a momentary relief where you can say, after all, it's all all that governs whatever it is that's happening, you know, past, present, future, goodness, evil, and whatnot. It, it really has a human aspect to it. So you can, uh, in these moments where the moment itself and life undresses itself to you, and suddenly life is naked in front of you, and, and you have some kind of a command over it, and and you do nothing but treat it with 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 care and with regard and with the um, with the um, with level of meticulousness and 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 really um, a naturally a positively uh, blending with with all those, those implications as a part of this uh, togetherness, this interaction. So yeah, that many years later, I find myself looking looking at everything through the eyes of most people but some sometimes i would uh, and, uh, experience certain moments where i maybe i can see things people cannot see or cannot and even if they can see they cannot really make much of it and uh, so i um, i really think for example if i started creating art i don't know at, at age 35 which is pretty late i mean literally when i say art i mean painting paintings because I was always skilled to write a poem and to play to play the drums and with the background of jazz drummer and understanding what jazz is all about and where it's coming from, what it means in the here and now and how the future is uh, showing uh, uh, the the, uh, the continuity <coughs> of of that which is inevitable in progress and and breakthroughs, especially in the world of music. I, I was a part of this understanding. I was a part of those who were responsible for creating that kind of, if I was to tell you that the first seeds took place in 1993 in Jerusalem in the jam sessions that I used to visit at Pargot Theater when I used to visit Israel on a yearly basis, uh, um, you know, for, for two or three months a year <clears throat> and just being a part of this foundation where jazz was, experimental and music and the yearning towards music and the actual playing of music was uh, in its most cliche stage yet in the same token in its most sophisticated uh, um, um, uh, uh, mix and result of it all and uh, You find yourself encountering that which the, this revelation gives you with some waves from the ancient past where those kings and queens the, and kingdoms and battlefields and and angels and prophets and all that was was uh, was what history was all about and it's like 
at your disposal in a way that you can actually place it wherever it is you want to place it to work for you as it appears in order to benefit that which you want to benefit and because in that motion forward of what life means all about is getting you closer and closer and closer you know there's no point of impact it is just closer and closer and closer so learning quickly enough that that closer is just all about steady as she goes every day you make progress the measurement is irrelevant it's just that you want to see that thing the elevation just kind of keeps on <clears throat> and so cliches and uh, that which is super super trivial is very vibrant in that becoming and it's strange because uh you wonder as things are kind of happening in life, why there's so much important placed for for the existence, a presence of of that which is cliched, but still it's hiding something really important that you're not aware. You're aware of what it is, but you don't. You're not aware what it really means. You know, it's almost like, do you like ice cream? Yes, I like ice cream. Did you ever, did you ever ask yourself? What does it really mean that you love ice cream? No, you never did. But you know you love ice cream. And if people say, ask you, do you love ice cream? You say, I like very much. And so it's the same. It's like, uh, you, I, I, I'm realizing, and it's especially because of what we go through as, as, a, as a world, you know, it's so ridiculous to think about Paris and Ukraine and, and Jerusalem and Israel and, and all these kind of stretch of of, uh, of countries that are just kind of uh, flexing this way and that way, inward and outward, and and all the other parts, like all the way from Russia and China, and all these, I don't even know, it doesn't matter really what it is, but it's just, uh, so, uh, we already know enough to know that if we just go outside of it a little bit, if, if we can do it without necessarily, without having to go to an airport and, and board a plane, that we can just kind of do this. I'm just kind of going like five miles outwards, five miles out, two miles outwards. And suddenly you see like a box or something, a ball, whatever. You see something that, that a cover can go over it and tie it up and put aside. You, you can see that you will see that you will see that you will see that and you will see that this kind of scenario of your imagination is doable it's, it's possible literally put it in the bag put it aside let's let's think about it later if at all uh, So I want to approach and I want to make progress, but I don't want to be caught in clichéism, you know. That's actually the thing that scared me the most, scared me the most when I started painting paintings because I was here in this community and I really realized, oh my God, I'm surrounded by great artists, artists that already had maybe 30, 40 years invested into the into the into this reality that's consuming their lives. and. And I'm like, just like, even though I'm determined on, I'm a visitor. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a, who is this person anyway? So that, that scared me the most when I was like, just facing this reality and saying, what do they, what are they thinking? What, I don't know why it was so important for me to think about, to want to know what they're thinking. They come to your art show and you're just starting and, and they're giving you these looks and you kind of know what it is, but you don't. And you're dying to know for sure what is it? What is it? That that means they love me. That means they resent me. That means they mock me. That means they disregard me. That means they're feeling sorry for me. That means they're happy for me. What does it really mean? So for the most part, I felt that everything was okay, but that did not stop bothering me, and I wanted, I wanted them to stop looking at me the way they did and the way they did wasn't anything of anything now i know 25 27 years later i know 
I could, I know, I know, I could have done. You know, that's why I say we really need someone early on when we jump into this kind of experiment or, 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 or whatever. Apart in initiating a journey, uh, with it, with that we don't have to be tortured and overthink things or, you know, chewing only once, you know, kind of thing. But you need someone to be next to you and just so adamantly approach you and say, I I wouldn't but I I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. I only needed to hear that from someone. I wouldn't worry about well well my girlfriend then used to was okay, but you know, you need people that that can tell you um, that can tell you like this, I've came I've been there. Uh, I wouldn't go there if I were you because there's so much more to do. So much more is expected from you. So that's something that is it, that's this is life everywhere with everything and every time and always this is what it is. It's wherever you go, this kind of formula is is a, is, is a reality, is a a condition, a and a mechanism that responds to equations, and and it's almost like pre AI AI you know like ancient I don't know primitive AI AI you know um, so so I, I slow down the process because I want to bump into he or she or they whom are going to eventually benefit from my ability and willingness to give and to share now that's a great quality, but obviously, if you do it long enough, it you don't the, 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 the sensation of quality disappears. It's more like effectiveness, relevance. Love this word relevance, um, and also relieving and being able to relate and be a, be a part of the rising process. All these R's floating around. In in the 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 real uh, the roasting <laughs> that eventually when when we go for the first bite we're not surprised that it's super delicious because what it was meant to be like that so you try hard not to try hard you try very hard not to try so hard and you actually operating very naturally in the kitchen you don't have too many knives or too many just a little bit here and then you peel and you cut and you this and you saute and you let it steam a little bit and you you know and you start with the spices and you you watch the salt because you can always add later and yes a little bit of heat into it and and you squeeze a lemon and 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 next to it you Kind of medium saute, some some kind of some kind of a, of filet mignon like a, a beef stew, you know, but the filet mignonish beef stew. So, so you're doing that. This is this is this is the approach to a canvas where you would say, okay, you come inside to your studio and you're exhausted because you exhausted yourself. In addition to the process that exhausting is it is exhausting it's so time consuming and exhausting and if you don't have enough time that's even more exhausting because you have to be able to fit so much within that fraction of time that that you know, of, of the amount that you really need but then when you fool but i remember yeah the early years i was uh, my, my even though i didn't spend 24 hours a day in my studio actually painting but out of out of 18 hours that I was awake, let's just say eight, nine hours I was actually painting, and then the rest of the hours, nine, ten hours, I was literally full of what it really means to be the artist that I want to be. The kind of artist, not whether artist or not, just the kind, because I was already becoming quickly a, a a a a a familiar presence of 
of the shadow that follows us wherever we go. And it's known to the world because there's so many others. It's just known. It, you leave the house, it's a declaration to the world of your presence. And I can think of the, 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 the heat and the level of, of intensity between the likes of, of, uh, of, of uh, Picasso and, uh, and, and those who left their, their mark and they were operating from such a deep level of conviction Keeping a straight face. I mean, it's power that imparts. It's almost like when you think of nuclear. If, if you think of, of throwing a bomb and and not bothering to look back or go check what happened because there would be nothing left. That kind of level of conviction those incredible artists had without even making you aware that indeed that's what's taking place. So I, I and not many people notice that because not many people, you know, even those who really actually are in the process of acting, being active painters and whatnot, uh, not being able that uh, aware that it's actually, yeah, they know it's there, but available, it's, 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 it's accessible. And there's a way to initiate and to utilize it. And there's a way also to make it follow you because it's in motion all the time. So there's a, a level of favorism because there's uh, some camaraderie was established. You find yourself actually that it kind of follows you, you know, and then it follows you long enough until it really enters your space and it's not leaving you. It's there. It's a part of the 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 the, the furniture, the, the interior design of it all. <clears throat> so going from being the age that I was very young and seeing my father, and I knew that he can slap me and slap me hard. And, and be sorry about it, and even though he says, I'm sorry or not, but it's not like, I got used to the fact that, you know what, I wasn't afraid of that moment, it wasn't like violent, but, but then being able to really kind of snap out of it and expand outwards and see some kind of things that is like off of, off of that moment a little bit 50 years earlier somewhere, and and um, and I learn and I learn fast, and I observe deep and I learn fast. So this Im implementation and this kind of uh, being able to relate to things at this level in order to feel and to act the way I did, right, making a whole difference. You know, can I making you feel like you don't have to think too much during the days because these days ahead they kind of guaranteed for you as a secured, you know, the growing, you know, a, a process of self-growth, inner growth, becoming young adults, and, and just as fast as you're growing from that teenage, from that baby, uh, from that early youth into in, in teenagehood and early adulthood and all this, suddenly from any adulthood, you're like kind of snip, snappy adult, adult, well, almost like the, the a middle age uh, of of that transition from uh, uh, the, the last uh, uh, layer of teenagehood towards the early layers of of young adultish into that kind of experiences of adulthood uh, where it doesn't always necessarily introduces itself so gently and and uh, it, and it takes place when you ne never anticipated and did it with so there's always a the uh, um, surprise the, the the potential of that surprise to to do a number on you but so i thought you know there was like really I, for me i thought it was like um, i like like it just worked just fine um, I, and i and I, I always come from a reality where i never believed that things will happen that you know i i don't I don't, I'm not the one who will give up hope, but, but I'm not the one that's going to create a situation where I would find myself needing to hope so much because it's actually not good. Something is derailed, wrong. And, and when all together, I can just kind of skip certain things and never find myself there. 
the dwelling that takes place. Oh my God, I see people around me because I saw myself like this for the longest time dwelling. Not because I was a dweller. It's because my actions led me to find myself in that territory, territory of, of dwelling, into the zone of dwelling. Nothing worse, nothing great with a greater waste of time than dwelling. Though it's important to dwell, you dwell for a couple of seconds because you want to dwell, you're a human being. You want to shed a tear in your own weird, weird way, it's fine. It make it genuine or not, it's fine. You need that time and that much time, it's fine. It should be granted. So as I, as I kind of take myself from, uh, uh, from the... And I just wanted to make sure that indeed uh, that's actually good news. You see, that's what I like. I like that I talk here, and uh, okay. That's good news. People are coming back to their senses. And uh, so a little wrong. Yeah. And this is right here. Okay, very good. So that's why I find myself mm, that's at the l the late stages of young adulthood into being a man, you know, and I'm like I get to experience the same periodically. Suddenly there's an expansion, going the backwardness, you know, the erupting abruptly. Suddenly you see the planet and you just have a little kind of, like a little bag and you cover it and you tie it and you put it aside, you're going to take it, you're going to leave it, whatever, something like that kind of. And then suddenly you see the details around you. When I say details, I mean human beings, those whom you know, the strangers, everyone, everything. Suddenly, they all become evident because they all find themselves in the forefront. Or wherever it is that they are at that particular moment, it's considered the forefront because they're kind of highlighted. And you can really build quickly that sense of compassion because you said to yourself, oh my God, this world is going through so much. And even if it's something that you already knew from before, but now you actually have the visual to come along with it, to go along with it, which is incredible because it tells you a story. It doesn't let go. It tells you a story. It, it tells you the story. It tells you that, that this particular st story is something that you always hear and to, when you read when you read the map and say okay can someone explain to me can someone can someone summarize can, can someone give me a crash course of what's going on here and usually you would get it will be done it will happen and then but most often than not not only that it won't happen it doesn't even show a, a sign of the potential for it to materialize it's like a lost battle before it even starts. But, uh, well, I'm, I'm describing it in a very dramatic fashion, but, you know, this whole thing hap takes place really fast because it moves fast. So later on you have time to reflect what really took place. And for some reason you're allowed to. For some reason you're allowed to. For some reason you can actually find yourself like walking on the, I wouldn't say the runes, but the leftovers of the past. And 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 it's actually a uh, actually a, an easy task for some reason. So I'm very happy to uh, being able to um, to experience this. And if I can uh, call my friend Steve Rum and see if I can catch him home, huh? I don't know why it's not. Uh, is that okay? No, it's okay. Um, if Steve Ram will answer us, then we can make fun of, of each other. Okay, let's see.
at least we know that we called him. So that's a good thing. So uh, it's funny because sometimes I, I, I hear myself or I feel as if I need to say, well, the conclusion is, and, and obviously I don't work this way. I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, um, I, I like conclusions, but I'm not conclusion oriented individual. But what's the conclusion? The conclusion is that this level of togetherness is so filled up with the compassion and with uh, a point of reference that is uh, healthy and established and substantial and that you can find yourself in that sense uh, like a visitor because it just feels a little lighter to be able to travel outside of yourself in order to you know, allow your system to do the work for you or to do the work because it likes to work on its on its own and kind of very feeling very happy if you kind of take a little walk or disappear for a portion of that uh, of that uh, uh, becomingness, so to speak. And the it's amazing I can hear the music in the other room, which is uh, in. Yeah, so uh, I will, uh, is that, uh, let's see if I can, because I'm looking, yeah, that's good. So the conclusion would be, really, if, if I was to draw any from what I just uh, shared with you, uh, to take the uh, certain ingredients that are forming in the early stages of you growing up and being mindful of the remnants because I, I don't believe that we should or even if we can look into every avenue and every aspect of that uh, unfoldingness and uh, that would be too overwhelming you know how we i'm more the one that would wait a little longer behind and kind of when everything is kind of settling down i I I, be, I I show up and I try to trace the process that took place, even though it's already done and over with. And uh, but being able to kind of reconfigure uh, the the uh, the the angles and the intensity and the and and so much more in that sense. So uh, I would. Uh, Yeah. Uh, gain respect towards certain things because I know the extent that so many forces need to go to uh, of their on all the sensations that I can mention here at 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 its most each one at its most for something so that means so much sacrifice needs to take place in order to achieve something. Um, mediocre at best, which is an incredible achievement. Mediocre at best, incredible achievement, and and it, 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 it's more a feeling than something that is explainable. Or, but but it's something that makes you feel like uh, like you don't want to spend twenty years in therapy in order to realize that you, A, shouldn't hate anyone or resent anyone, nevertheless, definitely not your father or mother, even if the worst thing ever happened, and maybe still happening, that, that you cannot set the trap. So you will fail, and you will stumble, and you will bump into, and you will be slowed down. And you will be challenged, and you will be. What well, challenge is not a bad thing, but how about how, how about just the right amount? You know, even pain, just the right amount. Hello, um, everything comes with a price in that sense. So we find ourselves uh, uh, understanding that, and this befriendliness is making uh, this possibility in eventual interaction very bearable because believe me even with the good stuff and the enjoyable stuff 
and the appealing stuff and the sweet stuff and the positive stuff still has pain involved. Uh, however you want to call it and for whatever reason it is, first I know without any doubt that it's there and most probably will be there no matter what. So understanding your relationship of what it is that you can bear, how much and what for and how come and for what sake. And uh, and you're also discovering your ability to put an end to it, to make it disappear, to make it go away. Interesting, isn't it? And then all along, you're in the studio, all along, like I am in my studio because I'm uh, going to show my face there next and I'm going to be immediately realizing that for me to relax means the ABC and the one, two, three in the configuration that I already learned before and put together because I was crushed too and disoriented too many times. And so many times I failed to understand that I did not prepare accordingly until I did. And once I did, I did it more. And it's what I did more than I hardly ever failed. And when I hardly ever failed, I became into second nature. It never happens. It's just an unbearable thought to self-inflict pain. And I don't even say pain. It's more like confusion and, and exhaustion. Who needs that? No, I don't. Especially when you're an artist, when you were like when, when you know these canvases, th this and this particular project and that, the five, six. Di if you work like me, five, six different things that are at play. Life seems rosier when you know that that's at your disposal and that's something you have, and also can't wait for the moment to share it with you. Because you see it with others, you see artists around, they can't wait. To impress you. Nothing wrong with that. Awesome. Because that means they create. Inside them, I don't care what artists tell you. We constantly try to impress people. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. Um, if, I, if I feel that, that, that I impressed you, I don't think I would feel bad about it. <laughs> I would feel happy. Because something is happening. You know? And that you, you show things and months later you bump into people and they tell you, that show you did was immaculate. Can't forget it. For many artists can be a point of reference. I saw this, I saw that. You know, it doesn't call it's not called stealing, it's called you borrow aspects because you say thank you. Because you could have easily left it in the studio, nobody would know about what you're doing, but thank you. And you know. And that level of compassion, now that it's deep enough and, and sturdy enough, you know, it, it, it pays attention to flexibility, you know, stretching. Love this word, stretching. And stretching, you know, obviously the stretching of the imagination, stretching of the possibility that the imagination uh, gave us that kind of speed of light, so to speak, attitude and uh, outlook. And we not only apparently, surprisingly, really using it a lot as human beings. It's just many of these wonderful, delicious things happen so fast that you you're not we're not even aware that it, that, that it just actually took place. But it doesn't matter really. I mean, it would be nice to be aware of everything that's going on around us, thanks to us, because of us, despite us. Um, but even if you see a portion. That's guaranteeing you a life that's definitely not going to be boring. Not much uh, can be uh, um, the I think that what I'm going to do I think I have a few sections that I can read for you here that are actually relating and that's just writings you know people write you know people write write you know maybe i should use this because 
it's uh, it, that's I think it was all of a sudden no is it all of a sudden all of a sudden uh, of course oh my god look at this mm. Uh, yeah, it's like talking about you heard the whisper. Uh, is it? Yeah, I think it's good. Definitely. Look at me with the glasses on. Well, you heard the whisper the second time around, blasting the tears to grow, grow above the initial takeoff. Is that the one? Yeah. Uh, actually, more like uh, man or oh man. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. This is. Um, Revolving around the extreme reaction, sipping on the sweat of others, learning to hold tight when the swamp rises to catch the next victim, a wet scenario, breathing times of rot and mildew, missing in action, squinting for prying purposes, solving problems partially, but the grip has a mind of its own, refusing to reconsider reasons, and you are caught in the middle, in the center of the dominance, only to shine from an unavailable crack, and it can pull you out of the role of disappearance, and lucky for you, hand is stretched, that hand is stretched forward to accept the gestures to accept the gestures by the crowd who never forgets in this case your shining light that extends beyond the vagueness of the moment as it stands for you as a testimony of selfless virtues designed to keep our society going in the direction of survival and longevity. Worry not, you a poetic soul, a poetic soul that you are. Worry not, the crowd is ready to lift you, to lift you through the hurdles of your next mission. You can keep that smile, that smile of yours and self-demeanor for the next lucky bunch to benefit from the rarity of your extravagant go goodness as you're roasting your feelings in the face of evaporating emotions. These are the kind that linger for as long as they are permitted. For a moment, you weren't sure whether you follow your instincts as you were proven right as if you're proven right every time you followed them in the past. And what was the signal to cut your awareness sharply and deceivedly, decisively towards the slippery slope and an end to dreams and aspiration squirted through years of intent and intent to closing due to searching without a mark to inform us of the actual beginning that actual beginning of the search and it must have a slow reaction as we placing the desire overtakingly pleading with mustness to prevail the holding on to prying without consent, praying with humility. 
You are repositioned without permission after the pain subsides. It's blurry and blurred expectations slicing grasps of a new of a new future. It is forming. But the required price is looming with clarity, gently padding, decising up. A short story with airy footsteps showing the way, a route with gardens and make-believe softness of greet the tired. I ended up not being you this time. Your journey is cut out to grasp the longer version of nearing the most immediate solution. A solution to breathe. I mean, breathe like a loving mama holding her breath to save the world from being grinded to the core. Slam dunk brilliancy. Supposed to avoid the smartness of the evil and the devil aspects from prevailing to I was there where I could observe you, though it was far from being under your control. Compassion swept the reason afloat, reaching for closure, green light from perseverance. At first it seemed as if a glow meant to blur the vision, quickly enough triumphing. And it appeared as a front runner, and he raised your head directly into that which is wholesome, and I was accepting your breakthrough, accepting it with much delight, and welcomed it to the ranks. Sweet man, something takes me back to growing pain, and it's not mine. I feel I haven't said enough. I haven't said enough to give you reasons to doubt. Excuses to favor, to favor an old time habits, justifications to stay afloat. Sometimes a whole community looks up to you. Without you noticing, a whole community. It feeds on your quiet yet resolved demeanor. Your adamant magic stretches evenly over the surface upon which you, upon which we preserve our long gone childhood as it's bold with missing parts, all alone with plans to overcome the guessing game, blasting with curiosity, without fear, we together stand across from its feel of innocence, silky and flat-faced, quoting the wholesome grudge. And you yourself did not grieve the similar instincts, a spare of the moment suggesting a clear image together with a clear vision blasting through the unfamiliar territory and there is an acknowledgement with accuracy and placement as we both saved us with the desire to blink and brush against random presence luckily a great match became evident the whole world of existence bringing home the awareness. There is secondary structures overshadowing a sweet stream, calm and characteristic with its slow-burning demeanor, running a tight outfit with straight records, and the music is playing, fly roll grasping Grasping for air. Hey, you. Turn around as you answer. I love you. Usually in the morning, I love you. So what do you say we have breakfast and then snuggle again? And then I will work on an answer. And already you're not happy. Yet you're covered by love. So, you know, people can write, obviously, no? I think people can write. And uh, 
and we can only consider ourselves lucky when we actually write them. We can only feel lucky when we're actually driving, I mean driving, writing, painting, playing music. So, I don't know, this kind of took me, uh, it's great writing, good, good stuff, anonymous. We're going to be here tomorrow as much as we were here yesterday and as much as we here this late afternoon of Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. Here with the Hello Hello Show, and my name is Chaim Mizrahi, continuing with the tradition of public access and the tradition of this particular show that's been on the air since 1980. Of course, not to fail to mention again the contribution by Fraser Dougherty, Francis Ann, and all of you out there that make it your business to enhance and fortify that concept. Good for you, good for us. And um, we can pray sometimes. It doesn't hurt. It's actually a good thing, a lovely thing. So if you have a minute, you can pray for the goodness of all and everything. And we love you here from LTV. And we want you to be aware of it. Have a beautiful day, night, morning, whatever it is.